Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about the nose, the paras paranasal sinuses and where they drain to. So first of all the external nose. It is pyramidal in shape and it's made up of different bones and cartilages. You can see the lateral view of the nose on the poster. Let's go through the bones and cartilages together. So marked with number one, the superior one here is the nasal bone, then the big blue part is the maxilla, number three is the septal cartilage, so it's on the dorsum of the nose, and we have the lateral cartilage, number four, the black part, and then we have the major alar cartilage and the minor alar cartilage, and fibrofetus tissue, number six, where the alae of the nose are. Let's go again through the structures of the nose. So we have the nasal root it's at the superior end and it's there where the glasses are usually put. It's made up of the frontal bone, then the dorsum of the nose the, or the bridge, uh, leading to the apex or the tip of the nose. We also have the alae or the wings and the two nostrils. So the bones were again the nasal bone, the maxilla and the frontal bone. They build a superior aspect of the nose and the cartilages. We have two lateral, two alar, one septal in the middle between the nostrils and a smaller alar. They are building the inferior aspect of the nose and that's also why the nose is more movable there. The skin becomes thicker over the cartilage and has many sebaceous glands and the skin is thinner over the superior part of the nose and has less glands and hair there. Within the nostrils there are hair cells which are filtering the air, catching particles and also they are warming the air up. We also of course have different muscles within the nose and connecting to the nose. They are part of the facial expression, so they are innervated by the seventh cranial nerve, nervus facialis. We have different muscles, uh, the procerus, which is located um, on the superior part of the nose and it's for elevation of the nose and depression of the medial eyebrows. It also leads to wrinkling of the forehead and you can try to contract it and you see what I mean. Then there's the musculus anomalus nasi, it's also for elevation of the nose. Then the levator labi superioris alequinasi, it's located on the lateral aspects of the nose. It's uh, for elevation of the nose and for elevation of the upper lips. Then the musculus transversus nasalis, it's compressing the nose. And then we have the musculus gilator naris anterior, which widens the nostrils, or is for flaring of the nostrils. And musculus depressor septi nasi, it's located in the inferior part, so kind of between the nose and the lip. And it's for depression of the septum nasi. Let's also talk about the blood supply and the lymphatic drainage. So there are different arteries, the maxillary artery and the ophthalmic arteries. They're uh, responsible for blood supply of the skin of the external nose. And then we have the angular and the lateral nasal arteries. They are a branch of the facial artery, which in turn is a branch of the external carotid artery. They supply the septum and the other cartilages. The venous drainage is by the facial vein, which drains to the internal jugular vein. The lymphatic drainage is by superficial lymphatic vessels, which are running together with the facial vein. They drain into the deep cervical lymph nodes, and the innervation can be divided in sensory and motor innervation. Sensory is by the trigeminal nerve, or the fifth cranial nerve. And then we have the first branch of the trigeminal nerve, so the external nasal nerve of the ophthalmic nerve. This is responsible for the innervation of the dorsum, the ale, and the vestibule. The innervation, the sensory innervation of the lateral nose is by V2, or the second uh, division of the trigeminal nerve, and it's the infra infraorbital nerve of the maxillary nerve. The motor innervation, as I mentioned earlier, is by the facial nerve, so CN7, because the muscles connected to the nose are responsible for part of the facial expression. 
We have four paranasal sinuses. A sinus is a hollow cavity. The word comes from Latin origin and their function is to give resonance to the voice as the air vibrates. They also protect the face in trauma and decrease the total weight of the skull. Also, they insulate against the temperature change in the nose and are part of immunological defense. They are lined by respiratory epithelium, so ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium, and they produce mucus that moisturizes the nasal passages and also the sinuses themselves. The cilia within the nose move the mucus and the mucus is drained from the sinuses through the nasal passages and then down the throat where it's being swallowed. We have four pairs of sinuses. The maxillary sinuses, the big ones you can see on the poster, located laterally to the nose. Then the frontal sinuses, they are superior to the eyes in the frontal bone. The etmoid sinuses, which are formed by air cells in the etmoid bone between the eyes and superior to the dorsum nasi. And the sphenoid sinuses, they're in the sphenoid bone. And now I want to talk about the innervation again. They are also innervated by the fifth cranial nerve and they drain into different parts of the nose. So the maxillary sinuses, they drain to the middle meatus. The frontal sinuses drain into the frontal sinus ostium. The etmoid sinuses are divided into a posterior part and an anterior part. The posterior part drains into the middle nasal concha or the superior meatus and the anterior part drains into the middle meatus. The superior meatus is located between the roof of the nasal cavity and the middle nasal concha and here are the openings for the sphenoid sinus and the posterior etmoid cells. The middle meatus is located between the middle and the inferior concha and here are the openings for the frontal the maxillary and the anterior etmoid air cells. The inferior meatus is between the inferior concha and the floor of the nasal cavity and here is the opening of the nasolacrimal duct. So that's also the connection why when someone cries also their nose will be runny. You can see the different structures and openings here in the cross section of the nasal cavity on the poster. We can go through them again. So we have the superior concha where there's the opening of the posterior etmoidal sinus and the sphenoidal sinus. Then in the middle concha, there's the orifice of the infundibulum, the maxillary sinus and the anterior etmoidal cells. In the inferior concha is the opening of the nasolacrimal duct and you can also see next to the inferior concha the opening of the oestachian tube. What you can also see in the cross section is the olfactory bulb where the nerve endings are ending so there uh, they lead to the brain and process the information taken up uh, by the nose. The nasal cavity is lined as I said earlier by respiratory epithelium. You can also see the different bones of the nose here and also in the inferior part of the scheme you can see the soft and the hard palate, a cross section of the lips and also uh, the cross section of the tooth. What you can see here between the hard palate and the nose is the opening of one of the nostrils, one of the nostrils. I hope this overview was clear and that you understood the structure of the nose, where the sinuses are located, where they drain to. That's it with the video. I hope it was helpful and I would be very happy if you could subscribe.